Uh, very proud to be here today at Hope Technology with Ian Weatherall. Uh, Ian, you're going to give us um, a few minutes of your time, which is much appreciated. Firstly, you're the founder of this company. Can you give our viewers uh, an overview of what you do here at Hope, for those that don't know? Yeah, we've been going about 30 years now. We've produced bicycle parts. We originally set off doing automotive and aerospace and cycle parts, but now we're just 100% bicycle parts. What, why, did, why did you move into your own product? I know this is quite an interesting story uh, of how it all happened. Well, what we were originally, myself and Sam were trials riders, motorcycle trials riders, and we used to train on mountain bikes. And the mountain bike standard caliper brakes were really poor quality. And we had disc brakes on our motorbikes. So we miniaturized the hydraulic disc brakes and moved them onto our mountain bikes. And we were the first people in the world to produce disc brakes on mountain bikes. Okay, so, you, but the very fact you wanted your own product, or you had your own product, you weren't very happy working in, in other commercial areas, were you? You really wanted to do something for yourself. Yeah, like I said, we trained at Rolls-Royce, so it's, it's a great company, we have a great place to train. But we were doing some sort of contract work for Rolls-Royce, and it was sort of, with their, all, all their approvals and quality controls and all the rest of the systems, 95% of our hassle for 5% of our turnover in the end. So we actually got rid of Rolls-Royce in the end as a subcontractor, you know, so we didn't bother doing it. And it was the right thing to do because the, the business has grown phenomenally. Uh, in fact, beyond the point that you can't supply all the customers that want your product, can you? And, you, and you've chosen to maybe uh, do things in a different way. Yeah, we've got, we supply between 50 and 75% of what people actually want. And uh, it's just the way it is. You know, the, the demand for the product worldwide is growing all the time. Because we want to produce everything in, in Britain in our own factory, we can't grow that quickly. And we're not willing to take massive debt on or take other investors. We actually w want to keep ourselves you know, tightly controlled and uh, our own organic growth, really. That's how we're doing it. And so tell us about that product that you are actually manufacturing here uh, in general, all of the types of parts that you supply. Because you do make a whole bike, but it's mainly... Uh, can you tell us about the parts actually made here? Yeah, the main thing we do are disc brakes, hubs, but we do also do uh, cranks, bottom rackets, headsets. So there's quite a lot of parts for, for the bike we do produce. And we've recently gone into carbon fibre. Well, what we do with the carbon fibre, we actually make our, all our own moulds and produce the carbon fibre in-house as well. OK, and I want to I dig into your technology that you have here as well. You've got a big belief in uh, investing in quality machinery in order to improve your productivity, haven't you? You run your machines unmanned, uh, 24 hours a day. Uh, tell us about yeah, that manufacturing process. Well, it's all about being competitive. You know, we are, we are competitively priced. That's one of the reasons why I have such strong demand for our product. So we are competing with China. Most of the other companies design something in the UK, US or Europe, and then they have a producer in China. What we do, we design it here, and then we manufacture it here. And to enable us to do that, you've got to have really good quality, reliable machines. You've got to get the longevity out of them. You can't be spending all your time messing around with trying to maintain machines. So we have, we have a full-time maintenance crew that do keep them going, but we do run the machine. We have a policy of run to destruction, and we just keep them going. And, and the, with the you know the brothers and, and the Matsuras and things, that sort of quality and Nakamura, it's, it's a real high-end machine we use. I mean, some might question whether some of your components need to be machined to tight tolerances, but would that be an unfair suggestion? Yeah, the thing is, it, it brings in reliability into hubs and things. If you produce them to a higher quality, the bearings and, and things last longer. If you produce the, the brakes to a higher quality, the seals last longer. So it gives you that longevity of a product. So people, they'll fit a brake and you can use it for 10 or 15 years and fit a hub and use it for that length of time. Whereas you get some of these products made in China, they're a lot cheaper production and the quality isn't there. So you get slight out, out alignment on bearings, and then you've got rough finishes where the seals are going on them. So it's, it's worth putting that extra little bit of effort into for the quality. Uh, what about Brexit for you here? I mean, the pound of I mean, I'm assuming you export a, a lot of your products or some of your products. Uh, with the pound being weaker, has that helped the growth of your company? Yeah, about 55 to 60 percent are export. But what we've found since Brexit, it's definitely helped with you know we, we are more competitive abroad. But we weren't able to supply before, so you just created more demand. But what's happened is. The UK, British patriotism, as it were, to, to British-made products seems to have grown. So actually, the biggest growth we've had is in UK sales. So it, it is unusual, really. That's pretty interesting, but good to know. Uh, research and development must be a big part of what you do here as well. Have you got a big team behind that? Yeah, we've got 10 full-time designers now and uh, testing, and we, are, we do all our, 
I was a tool maker at Rolls Royce, so we have an obsession with making all our own tooling and fixtures and things. So that's led up to all of the fixtures on the machines are all produced here, all the tooling's on here. And that's brought us into the, the carbon fiber, We're making the molds and making specialist machines. So that's one of the things we do. Where is the future in the types of products that you supply? Is it in making them uh, stronger, lighter, cheaper? Uh, wh wh where do you see that? It's, we, our goal is to keep the quality, and that's what it's all about. Is people want longevity on, on products. They, they, they do want them lighter, they do want them. They say they want them cheaper, but you know, it doesn't seem to, we, we are competitive. That, we've got to be in the ballpark, high end, but in the ballpark. You can't be astronomically expensive. One or two people have come into the market and just put astronomically expensive, you know, these 10,000, 12,000 pound bikes. So that's, that, you know, you've got to be competitive and that's what we want to try and do. Uh, you do have a bike track out the back here where people test uh, some of your products. When can we expect to see a velodrome here? Well, that's our next plan. We, we, with the expansion we've got, we have a site, a six acre site already. We've got the drawings going through now. So I got the idea from the Italian job with the minis racing around the top of the Fiat factory. And I thought it'd be great to have our own velodrome upstairs. So we've got the drawings all done for it. And we're hoping within the next 12 months to have started that. Uh, and, and just to conclude this, uh, Ian, if we were to take your company over the past three decades, uh, maybe one decade in, then to two decades in, and then today, what's the uh, increase in your turnover, uh, the products that you supply? How much has this business grown, just to give us a flavour for how big you are? Yeah, we've, we've, grown, sort of, we've grown quite steadily, really, 5 or 6% a year, right through. But uh, recently, it's ramped up, and the last two years have grown by 30%. But with producing everything yourself, it gets a bit tricky trying to expand at that rate because as you get larger, you buy more machines and we don't borrow money. We don't want to, with, there's no debt whatsoever within the company. And if for my security, make me feel better and the security of everybody here, we don't, we don't get into debt with anything. We own the building, we own the machines, we do a little bit of asset finance, but that's all we do. Uh, final message for maybe youngsters, entrepreneurs, uh, budding engineers about UK manufacturing and how you can make it a success uh, from someone in your position? Yeah, the thing is, we, I mean, we've been at it 30 years, so it's been a slow grind for us. It's been, it was very hard work at first, but it, it does bring rewards. And but one thing that does get me a little bit is that the government encourages you to sell your business, giving this entrepreneurs relief at 10%. So people need to stop talking about selling businesses and letting these venture capitalists come in and destroy businesses. The people who set the business up know how to work the business and run the business. You don't want to become indebted by selling part of your business to someone else and then they, they hammer you. And that's what I think well, our thing, I've promised my staff, and friends and family who work here that I'll never sell the business. And I think that is a good clear thing. As soon as you get an outside investor in, they want to increase it you know, 25 to 30% a year. It puts pressure on everybody and they only indebt the company. And actually you know more about your business than they do because the most of them are just financiers, I haven't a clue. Uh, that's thwarted me, I was just about to make you an offer. Thank you very much for your time, Ian. Uh, really good story here uh, at Barn Oldswick from Hope Technology. Thank you, Ian. Thank you.